Council Agenda, Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, Township Council Agenda Meeting of February the 7th, 2023. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by filing the notice in the Office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December the 21st, 2022, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record and the Newark Star-Ledger on December the 28th, 2022. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on Cablevision, Public Access Channel 21, at 11 a.m. on Sundays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Would you please join me in our flag salute? Paul? Pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would we please stand for one moment? And in your own way, remember the earthquake victims in Turkey and Syria. Thank you. May we have roll call, please? Mr. Uh, Karifi? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Mr. Musella? Here. Mr. Neglia? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Also in attendance are Business Administrator Jamie Cryan, Mayor Jamie Barbario, Township Attorney Michael Lavery, and Township Clerk Colin Madden, Council President. We have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, February 21st, 23, at 7 o'clock, regular meeting. March the 7th, 23, 7 o'clock, agenda meeting. Approval of minutes for reorganization meeting of 1423, agenda meeting 1423, and regular meeting of 12423. Presentations and reports. Mayor? Yes, um, thank you, Council President. Um, I just want to um, update the Council on our, our Moody Standard and Poor rating with regards to um, our credit worthiness. Um, as you know, uh, over the last few years, of course, companies, our finances were in a turmoil. And um, year, year, each year, Moody Standard and Poor um, reviews, and um, either we uh, decrease our credit rating, or they keep it the same, or they increase, you know, increase it in a positive way. Well, we had several meetings with them, and uh, myself, the BA, and they changed the way that they to their ratings, which is more stringent and more difficult. Um, and a lot of towns are probably going to be downgraded. Uh, in the conversations we had with them, that they were very, very, very impressed with Parsippany's ability to replenish its surplus the way that it did. And, and I got to tell you, I really believe in, uh, I can, the VA can speak on it as well. That's what saved us from uh, being downgraded in our um, in our ratings. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Um, so, as you know, in 2020, uh, our surplus was pretty much depleted. We really had and none left. 2021, there was none. There was really none whatsoever. I wasn't mayor at the time. Um, a lot of that has to do with the way that the monies are used and the way it's anticipated into other funds um, and stuff like that. So. We get to 2022, you know, we still have some situations here in Parsippany, and we had to make some tough decisions here uh, in the township, and we made them. But let me tell you what it did do. Now, if you've heard in the past that, you know, water surplus and sewer surpluses were used into the current fund last year, but they've been replenished. Um, they've been replenished all the way. Right now, if we combine the current fund, the sewer and water utility, we have $16 million in total surplus. So that's a plus, a plus to the township. And they were very, very, very impressed that we were able to do that. And they did not downgrade us. They kept us the same. I just want to read some stuff that they actually wrote. It reflects that the township's strong underlying credit quality evidenced by its AA2 issuer rating and its reliable history of market access and healthy liquidity. 
The A2 doubled the issue rate and reflects the town's strong economy and recently improved finances. And that's what's uh, going on here in Port Ship. And I'm proud to say that I'm very, very happy that we kept our AA2 uh, bond rating uh, with uh, standards Moody and Poor. Now, I don't know if you would like to add anything, um, but but b before we go into that, um, I have to tell you, you know, we take a lot of shots during the years about the surplus. And for eight years I was mayor, I always tracked it. And I tracked it every every year to see where we stood. And as Councilman, uh, Council Vice President Mike DePiro said, we always re always made sure it could be replenished. And this time around, it was replenished again. Um, it's it saved us from being downgraded, and that's that's important that we didn't get downgraded because we need to borrow, we need to bond, we need to do certain things and certain projects. And when you're downgraded, you get hit with higher rates. Well, that didn't happen here in Port Sipany. so. Uh, that's, that's that's it on the bond rating, and I tell you, it was when we had the meetings. It just sounded like they were going to downgrade us because it's so stringent. No matter how good we did, the way they the criteria that they have now is very very stringent. But they were so impressed with our ability to recover so fast, not just with the surplus, but you know, even after the pandemic, a lot of towns haven't recovered yet. But we're starting to show recovery here in Parsippany. Um, that being said. I'll be sitting with the CFO and the BA with regards to the budget uh, council president, and then we'll start up some meetings for the finance committee to meet. Um, I don't have all the numbers yet to, um, you know, give anybody here whatsoever, but um, I'm hoping to have a good year. It sounds like it. Um, our revenues came in strong last year, and I, I anticipate them to continue to come in strong. Excellent. Thank you, Mayor. Township Council? I have one thing. In my role as liaison to the planning board, um, requests come through for soil moving permits. Now, the township engineer meets with applicants and their engineers and their architects and goes through their drawings and, and, and looks at their plans and looks at their drainage. Um, and determines how many truckloads of soil is going to be moved and how it's going to be moved. Then it comes to the planning board and they look at it and they ask questions about how many truckloads and how is it going to be moved and where are they going to move it, what streets are they going to use. And then it comes to the council for final approval and we kind of ask the same questions. Now this is redundancy that's really unnecessary. Um, I, I have mixed feelings here. If we leave it just to the township engineer, if they let trucks drive on routes where it interferes with some school or some function, um, the people call us, the council, and complain. They don't call the engineer. They call the council. We're the, we're the last step. So I guess we have to be in there someplace, but, but to have three different departments going over the same soil moving permits is redundant. Can we look at that and, and see if there's a way to streamline it? Absolutely. I mean, maybe one of the things we do is just once the planning board approves it, like other things, it goes to the building, the con you know, the construction department, and then they can just issue the permit based on that. But we'll take a look at the reasons for Well, that takes us out of the loop. Yeah. But, but if there is a problem with how the trucks a rooting and, and dirt on the street or whatever, okay? The people call us. Right. The elected officials. So I don't know if we need to come out of the loop completely, but I, I know it just seems like it's too redundant. All right. I will take a look at that, Council Vice President. Thank you. Township Attorney? Uh, no report this evening, Council President. Thank you. Business Administrator? Thank you, Council President. Uh, just to re reiterate what the mayor said, uh, the bonds process to simplify it is basically basically like getting a home loan. So, and all loans are based on risk. Uh, if you're going for a mortgage, the less risky your whole package, the better rate you can get. So, what this did by um, staying with the AA2 rating. Uh, which is uh, a, a very high rating, uh, allows us to 
uh, borrow cheaper. Um, we spend less money to utilize our funds. So it's a, it was a great opportunity for the township and a great job by mayor and, and the finance team. Um, you know, especially in this rising rate environment right now, um, it's where, where uh, every day rates keep going up. It, it really makes things much cheaper and much better for us from a financial standpoint uh, long term. And um, I just wanted to report Council President that I'm continuing my one-on-ones with department heads and division heads, and it's going very well. Um, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Township Clerk? Uh, no report at this time, Council President. Thank you. Township Office Committee reports? Yeah, I have two updates, Council President. Uh, first update is I, I want to thank the uh, DPW and the administration for quickly fixing uh, a pothole that residents were complaining about uh, in, in a very uh, quick manner. And then my, my second update is from uh, the Historical Advisory Committee we met. And one of the things that we're planning to do is to showcase some of the historical assets that Parsippany has and, and have events there where we can speak to the role played in Parsippany's history. And I'll be working with them on trying to set up our first date. And then I'll obviously let the council and mayor know so everybody can be there. Thank you. I have uh, some updates on businesses that have moved to Parsippany and our ribbon cutting ceremonies. In Vogue Salon, that was originally on Route 46, has now moved to 54 North Beverly Road in Lake Hiawatha, and we will have a ribbon cutting on February the 18th at 10 a.m. Cornerstone First Mortgage Company, they have moved to 6 Century Drive, Suite 180 in Parsippany, and a ribbon cutting ceremony will be held on February the 23rd at 4 p.m. On Tuesday, March 4th, 14th, excuse me, at 2 p.m., Bathasium at 30, 135 North Bedwick Road in Lake Hiawatha, they have recently moved to this new location. We have an economic development meeting on Wednesday, March the 1st at 6.30, and the public is invited. Council, Anyone else? Yeah, Council, I forgot yes. one thing. I apologize. I, and I think this deserves recognition. I want to congratulate um, the Reservoir Tavern for being ranked the best Morse County oh. for um, their onion pie at the Reservoir Tavern was ranked the best by NewJersey.com. And, um, Ferrara's Italian food specialties, meatballs placed third out of more than 3,100 restaurants at the Pizza Bowl 3. So Excellent. it's good to hear that these are parsimony ba uh, based uh, companies. Excellent. Thank you. We don't have any correspondence that I see. Bids taken January the 19th, 23, electrical upgrades to wells number 9, 12, and 13. Two. January the 25th, 23 Baldwin Road, Sanitary Sewer Modifications. Three, January the 25th, the 23rd, 1, 2022 or newer Ford F-550 regular cab 4x4 DRW for Persephone Water Department. Four, January 26, 23, Well 21 dash R, replacement well and treatment facility improvements to be taken February the 16th the 23rd 23rd remount and re chassis of two new 2023 or newer Ford F 550 4x4 super cab type 1 modular ambulances two February the 16th 23, lease of public property. There are no quotations, proposals, or qualifications. I'd like to entertain a motion to open the public hearing, please. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by uh, Mr. Misella. <coughs> roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public. Uh, you can speak on any matter, and you have five minutes to speak. Okay, seeing no one, 
Make a motion to close. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella. Seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Floor is closed. There are no introductions for ordinances. We have a second reading in public hearing, Ordinance 2023-01. I have some comments on that. Uh, the planning board met last night, and this ordinance uh, was, was sent back to the planning board, and we do not know why. We heard someone say that it was a, a one-word change. Well, this particular ordinance was reviewed by the planning board two weeks ago. It met the criteria for an overlay network, and it was consistent with the master plan, and the planning board approved it and recommend the zone change to the council. So we already had introduced this ordinance once, does anybody know why it was bounced back to the planning board? It, I, my understanding, uh, Council Vice President, was that there was a couple of minor things that the planner, the town's planner, had missed when they had revised it, and I don't have it in front of me. I'll check mine. See if I can. Well, the up. town planner had no information. In fact, no well, one. The board, pl the board planner, not the town planner, Mr. Weiser, had drafted the ordinance, and then apparently there was some. Um, wordage or language that was left out that had to be revised. Is this a major change or a minor change? I believe it was a minor change. Then we don't need to hold it up. It was a minor change. And if it was a minor change, yeah. it, it did not need to be brought it to the planning board. I, I, I know there was an issue with the verbiage. Uh, was a couple of words that had to be changed, but there was there was significant because it was including menu. I believe the word was manufacturing. That's the one word that they wanted to include in there. Well, why, why wasn't that information transmitted back to the planning board so we could review it? No one on the planning board had any information except there was a word change. Yes, that was the information. <laughs> that's, I can, in, that's insufficient information yeah. to, to deal with. No, I understand. I can, I can look into it a little bit more and get back to you. Uh, well, it's 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 a it's a dilemma because it's time sensitive, right? Right. This yeah. this particular applicant, okay, started out in in uh, October. We started, and the wording was poor, to to say the least, and had to be rewritten. And it delayed it. It ran it into this year. Hmm? This applicant has been waiting now from October, November, December, January. February. Okay, four months he's been waiting to get started. And now we have another holdup because of wording. Yeah. Is there any way they can introduce this again? It's been introduced. So this is second, this is going second, to go second reading. Second reading. Right. Second reading. At our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So if we have to... Uh, but if uh, it's a major change... It's, it's not a major... cancel it and re re No, no, I can tell you, I know uh, that it's definitely not a major change. It was a minor change, probably de minimis at that. And it was, if my memory serves me correctly in speaking to the attorney that was working on this, uh, that it was one word, and I believe that word was to include manufacturing. Just, that's what I believe, uh, yeah. if my memory serves me correct. But I will confirm that with you. Yeah, and I will follow up. Not, not that this helps, but I've got the email from Mr. Weiser in front of me that's dated January 23rd it's to Nora Jolie. It says, I was just made aware that the draft ordinance I sent you for tonight's review had some editing marks that should have been removed. Here is a clean version except for the watermark and highlighted ordinance number. Can you please make sure the board has this version? Apologize for the additional work. Now, the one that's attached doesn't help me because it doesn't have the edits. It's just the clean version. So unfortunately... You know, I can't tell you. I, my understanding was they were minor, but I can't find that draft as I'm looking for it now. Mr. Lavery, do you feel that uh, corrections can be made so that this may be uh, voted upon at our next meeting? Well, my understanding is this one is the correct version, so that you would be in a position to vote on it at the but next meeting. from what we're hearing from Councilman DePiro, that's not the case. Well, what happened was we already adopted this ordinance, 
and then it was discovered after the council had adopted this that this language was messed up okay. so then wiser revised it and then sent it back to us so i think this is the second time we're doing this so then it will be yeah the version that we have now is correct the problem is i think when it was sent back to the planning board they didn't highlight what was changed or what what hadn't been removed correct. so okay so that when we when we when we adopt this we're, we're done that's the right version it's clean at the next meeting okay thank you sir you're welcome all right then we need to at least send something back to the planning board to say that no further action is required on their part correct because it, my understanding i will confirm that there was nothing major which i don't believe there was again it was just from his own letter it said it was editing remarks that he left in there so i can confirm that with the planning board attorney okay thank you consent agenda the resolutions does anyone have any questions on the 11 resolutions that are before us yeah why don't we have the asterisks on there which asterisks on all our, of them on our resolutions there are no asterisks it's questioned don't we always have for a consent agenda well asterisk that's a the part of the consent agenda oh that's uh, for the uh, uh regular meeting we don't we don't do that on the agenda meeting we just leave it there but the asterisk i know what you're talking about that's special that's just for you mike we're going to make sure we have that on for the regular meeting all right thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> councilman negley would you please do the approved payroll and bills list sure cfo leonard ho recommends authorization for payment authorization payment of the february 3rd 2023 regular and miscellaneous payroll estimated at one million six hundred fifty thousand dollars payment of bills from voucher list to 123 through 2323 is one million three hundred ninety one thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars and three cents motion to approve the authorization for payment above by myself second motion made by mr neglia seconded by mr karipi roll call mr karipi yes mr DePiro. yes mr musella yes mr neglia yes Brignani. yes motion passes Motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia. Seconded by Mr. Karipi. Roll call, Mr. Karipi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Uh, Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Brignani. Yes. Council President, great first meeting. Very quick one, so that's phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Have you a good night, everyone. Good first meeting. Brought in the closer. <laughs>